the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Welcome friends, welcome congregation members, welcome all. Last week, we got to hear some stories from some windows that painted pictures and shared them with us of Palm Sunday, of Maundy Thursday. It is that movement back into a familiar space to familiar stories. And it's going to be that movement towards those final moments, what we know as the passion narrative. And luckily in that darkness, we know it is a movement toward the cross and toward resurrection. So we're going to hear those stories today from our windows, always remembering it is our story. And when the windows don't have the opportunity to tell them themselves, we get to do that with and for them. Welcome. Now, dear congregation, let us listen to the gospel of this Sunday. I will read it in German and Adam will do that in English. Matthäus 9, Verse 35 fortfolgende. Und Jesus ging ringsum in alle Städte und Dörfer, lehrte in ihren Synagogen und predigte das Evangelium von dem Reich und heilte alle Krankheiten und alle Gebrechen. Und als er das Volk sah, jammerte es ihn, denn sie waren verschmachtet und zerstreut wie die Schafe, die keinen Hirten haben. Da sprach er zu seinen Jüngern, die Ernte ist groß, aber wenige sind der Arbeiter. Darum bittet den Herrn der Ernte, dass er Arbeiter in seine Ernte sende. Then Jesus went out about all of the cities and the villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness along the way. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, I ask the Lord to send out laborers into his harvest. The word of the Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Lasst uns beten. Barmherziger Gott, durch die Taufe hast du uns in deine Nachfolge gerufen. Wir danken dir, dass du uns für würdig erachtest. Und deswegen bitten wir dich, hilf uns, dass wir deinem Ruf folgen und stets auf deinen Wegen wandeln wollen. Das bitten wir dich durch Jesus Christus, seinen Sohn, der mit dir und dem Heiligen Geist lebt und regiert in Ewigkeit. Amen. Merciful God, through baptism, you called us to follow you. We thank you for considering us worthy, and we ask you to help us to follow your call and to work always in your ways. We ask this through Jesus Christ, your son, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen.
here we are, and we're about to approach our next set of windows. We are walking back into a familiar space. We are going to look left, we are going to look right, and we're going to see some windows that are taking us in the direction of Easter, but we aren't there quite yet. We have found a passage that we think sums these all up. It is the common thread that moves between all four of these windows and connects it to the one before and the ones after. So take this reading with you, take these words from the gospel according to Matthew with you and see if you can figure out where all of those layers live in these windows. The gospel according to Matthew in the third chapter. When he, that is John, saw many Pharisees and Sadducees coming for baptisms, he said to them, you brood of vipers, who warned you about the wrath to come? Bear fruit worthy of repentance. Do not presume to say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our ancestor. For I tell you, God is able from these very stones to raise up children to Abraham. Even now the axe is laying at the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. I baptize you with water for repentance, but one who is more powerful than I is to come after me. I am not worthy to carry his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. The word of the Lord. Dear congregation, in the beginning of our text, we heard incredible words spoken by John the Baptist. Can you imagine such words coming from the mouth of Jesus? I find it incredibly difficult. This is why today we need to look closely at the biblical context of our window, which is about baptism. John obviously had an inkling of what was come. Prepare the way for the Lord. This is how he addressed the Pharisees and the people from the Jewish sect of the Sadducees. They were to change the idea and expectation of the coming of the Messiah. The old ideas and the, fa the false hope should be let go. Namely, that the Messiah would place himself at the head of the people to free Israel from the oppression of the Romans. These ideas had to be felt, like the trees whose roots are cut off by the axe. Such expressions were fruitless. The mission of Jesus of Nazareth was different, and his call to follow him had different goals and intentions to us as well. Jesus was a child of the pleasure of our God. This could be heard and experienced by all who were present at his baptism in the Jordan River by John. This is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. These were the words to understand his baptism. Over the life of the baptized is pronounced the pleasure, the joy of God, his infinite love. And Jesus then carries this into the lives of those around him in his actions and his dealings with people. All should recognize this good pleasure and its meaning prepare the way for this mission. Not only Jesus was baptized, dear congregation. 
I think that almost all of you have been baptized. Your baptism and also my baptism have the same meaning. You are my beloved child in whom I am well pleased. God tells us. And we are on the journey of our lives following Jesus with the same, exactly the same mission. We are called to be witnesses of this good pleasure, of this joy of God, of this this infinitive love. That is why there is congregation, parish, church of Jesus Christ. That is why it is always good for us to be made aware that we are sent off into life in exactly this way. Wow. When we let these windows speak, They have a lot to say, and we know it's our responsibility to then go and share those stories, and that's a lot. That window that you're discussing, that beautiful dove above that clear blue water, in my mind, it's that same dove that showed up with a branch in its mouth and landed on the deck of the ark and brought hope back. It shows us the hope in the sacrament of baptism, which is an outward and visible sign of that internal grace. It's that moment that we talk about as the grafting of a branch into the vine. It's beautiful. And if there were a confirmation window, I think it would want to tell us that those grafted branches have come into the vine at baptism And they have been fortified and grown and nourished by the vine. And confirmation is that time where the vine says to the branch, this is your role. This is now how you serve the vine and you serve everyone around. This is the fruit that you will bear for those to take on their journey. So I guess if there was a confirmation window, confirmation would be the axe. If you don't bear good fruit, you get felled, you get chopped and thrown into the fire. I will bring that up in confirmation class, but I do not think that this will be uh, the symbol that we put on front of the service bulletin unless Marlena gets away with it. Bearing fruit to me is this really interesting thread that we see throughout these windows. There are all these beautiful harvest and creation references. Our first window spoke to us of our role as members of creation, our relationship with the creator and our partnership with the creator in caring for creation. It was a lot to take with us and it's beautiful. And perhaps because I am so heavily invested in so many different great ministries and projects of the church that have to do with planting, that's why all of these words really stick to stick with me and speak to me. The growing that I'm doing, I have a lot of support from different neighbors on both sides of me out here as I take care of the parsonage and, of course, from other members of the community who are helpful and loving in my pursuit of a green thumb, which has not happened yet. So that that passion was with me when we looked at that window and listened to the story of the Kiro last week, those combined Greek letters which are actually on our Easter candle this year. And that image was punctuated with grapes, bunches of grapes. My neighbor on this side, Mr. Lorenzo, grows grapes. I think perhaps those vines are there to create a little bit of privacy between the two houses. But I know that he harvests them and his family gathers, and it's a joyful time. It is a small harvest, but it's a lot of joy. And I know that when he clips it back and he takes off certain branches and he removes those grapes to be enjoyed, the vine grows stronger. And I know, Pastor, that your family uh, grows white beans. I hope I've got the terminology right. I might have the name wrong, but I love them. I've had them in that beautiful red tomato-based soup. I was given some. We had them at our spring bazaar. And I have soaked them and I've made baked beans out of them. And I absolutely love them. 
The difference there is when a bean is harvested, the plant is killed and discarded. It might be fed to cattle or other things in the barnyard, but in general, it's thrown out. It is waste. And then I keep thinking of Mr. Lorenzo's grapes. And when it's pruned, it grows stronger and in time will produce more. The window that I get to speak of today feels somehow heavy, although it's an image of a beautiful thing. It is the chalice and it is the bread. That chalice is the one instituted last supper, we would say. And we know that it was held up and Christ said, drink. And when we gather, we get to do that. And it is full of wine, which comes from grapes, which were removed from a vine and the vine grew stronger and it produced more. And then the other side of that image is the bread made from flour, much more like a bean. It's a plant that has to be cut off at the root. It has to be felled. And most of it is waste or fed to other animals for us to get the flour to make that bread that Christ took and broke and said, take and eat. They all require sunshine. They all require water, which we see in our other windows. And the wine takes love and time in perfect conditions. And the bread requires sacrifice. It feels heavy. And I'm reminded of John chapter six. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Who comes to me shall not hunger. And he who believes in me shall not thirst. And I have that in mind with our passage from Matthew when this window speaks to me and tells me of sacrifice because I know it is the gospel and it wants to say sacrifice, but it really wants to say hope. Man sagt, er war ein Gammler, er zog durch das ganze Land. Raue Männer im Gefolge, die er auf der Straße fand. Niemand wusste, wo er herkam, was er wollte, was er tat. Doch man sagte, wer so redet, ist gefährlich für den Staat. Man sagt, er war ein Dichter, seine Worte hatten Stil. Wer ihn hörte, schwieg betroffen und ein Sturm war plötzlich still. Seine Bilder und Vergleiche waren schwierig zu verstehen. Doch die Leute saßen stundenlang, ihn zu hören und zu sehen. Man sagt, er war ein Zauberer, an Wundern fehlt es nicht. Er ging zu Fuß auf einem See und gab dem blinden Augen Licht. Machte Wein aus klarem Wasser, kannte Tricks mit Fisch und Brot. Und er sprach von einer Neugeburt, weckte Menschen auf vom Tod. Man sagt, er war Politiker, er rief, ich mach euch frei. Und die Masse wollte gern, dass er ihr neuer König sei. Er sprach laut von Korruption und wies auf Unrecht offen hin. Doch man hasste seinen Einfluss und so kreuzigten sie Der Sohn des Höchsten, doch er kam, 
um Mensch zu sein. Offenbarte Gottes Atem uns aus Sünden zu befreien. So hab ich ihn erfahren, so begann ich ihn zu sehen. Und ich meine, es wird Zeit, wir sollten ihm entgegen. Und ich meine, es wird Zeit, wir sollten ihm entgegengehen. Dear Congregation, let us go a step further with the wonderful, simple beauty. The image of Good Friday shines into our church. Roses in the corners and the green vines on the sides and, and in the lower part of the picture make this clear. To read is the mocking writing of Pontius Pilate, Inri, Jesus Nazarenus Rex Judorum, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. Yes. To some, a symbol of mockery, to others, the symbol of worship. The cross makes it clear how the kingship of Jesus Christ is to be understood. The reference to the beauty of creation, roses and green vines, are a subtle hint that on the cross, the work of the creator is not finished. This cross is in fact empty as you can detect. Only a linen cloth, a folded shirt hangs there still abandoned. The power of the tyrant is broken. His mockery turned into a praise. And we follow the way of the resurrection of the crucified one, the good pleasure of God, which turns out so completely differently than the people could or also wanted to expect it. And we... We celebrate this deep spiritual realization, this wonderful truth of faith. Good Friday and Easter belong inseparably together. Oh, thank you. Good Friday and Easter belong inseparably together. That, that lifts a bit of that weight from that window and it brings us back to joy and God's surprises, which might be frustrating. You're, you're right. I loved that word, that wording. God is not finished yet. We are a work in progress. Our understanding grows. We are definitely an Easter people around here. These windows, when you look at this image of them, Uh, we have to thank the photographer at some point. It was so perfectly done. Our windows are two-sided. They tell the story to those of us inside when the light shines in through, from the sun. And at night when the light shines out, they tell the story as well. And when you see this window from outside, you can actually tell in these images with this photographer, the outside of the church in that area is covered in vines. And we know that there is a vine and sometimes that vine has a thorn, but the thorniest vine produces the most beautiful rose. Incredible images and incredibly layered. And this is our fourth window, which means I have a head swimming, trying to articulate the string that flows through them all, much like our reading from Matthew. Uh, but with this image, I think there's nothing challenging about finding that common thread. Uh, it's finding the words that's hard. So I think we let the, the window speak. 
in our final window this morning. The image is the Lamb of God in Latin, the Agnus Dei, which we saw in a previous window last time. We saw this little lamb and it was small. It appeared weak, like it was taking its first steps, but behind it, it had a strong father giving it balance, strength, and I would like to believe some encouragement. But now in this window, the lamb is bigger and stronger and standing alone, not in front of that shepherd's crook, but in front of a banner known as the banner of victory, which is actually the name of the former Soviet Union flag. But those are some images to worry about another day. This Agnes Day, this image of the Lamb of God, is an old image. Uh, it's in many stained glass windows around the world. It has told its story in many ways on many different days. Other versions usually have in the background that Kiro symbol that we discussed last week, the beautiful one that points to Christ risen and the authority of scripture and God's word and promises coming true. And our lamb today stands in a bed of daffodils, the flower that symbolizes triumph over sin. We met those flowers in our Palm Sunday window. And in the corners of this one are daisies, which introduce us to innocence in creation. All of these layers that have told our story all come together. And they are like that fig branch in the beak of the dove or a rainbow. They want to give us hope. They want to share our role in our gospel. They want to say God keeps his promises. God is with us and for us. That's what they want to say. And when they don't get the chance to do it, we do it with and for them. Let me leave you with the words of the Agnes Day, which is an anthem which is chanted or canted, said or sung at the time of communion in a lot of different churches. And it is, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Amen. Amen. Now, dear congregation, we have to congratulate our worthy persons. Liebe Gemeinde, nun ist Zeit, unseren Geburtstagskindern der Woche zu gratulieren und ihnen herzliche Grüße zu senden. Wir gratulieren zum Geburtstag Julian Baumann, Christel Wendland und Maria Hack. Again, congratulations. Happy birthday, friends. With all of this in mind and the images of our windows still fresh, together, let us pray. As we pray, there will be a poignant pause where you can allowed or privately with God Share the names of those you have been asked to pray for. Lord God, our heavenly father, the word of the cross has touched us here today. We realize how much you love us and we ask you, help us to carry this love and message further, to care for one another and to stand up for one another always and in prayer. Let your power be mighty in us and help us to trust not in our own strength, but in your grace and mercy, we pray. Lord, have mercy. We pray for those who are threatened by danger and for all who experience suffering at the hands of forces with which they have no control. We ask that people who are dying may not be stripped of their dignity, that all who have preceded us in death be forever safe with you. Be close to those who grieve because 
for them a dear person has passed away. Lord, we pray. Lord, have mercy. We pray for the church that she may serve you in an incredible way and clearly stand up for the rights of all people. Raise up prophets to the church who proclaim the spirit of love and justice, the spirit of truth and freedom, so that by their words and deeds, she, the church, may help to dispel the darkness, the hunger, the poverty, the injustice, and the bondage that comes with this world. We pray. Lord, have mercy. We pray for all married couples. Give them a fulfilled marriage. Grant them that they may always seek you and accept your help and guidance. Help those who are in conflict to find a solution to it. Forgive those who are guilty. Be with children who suffer from the hardships of brokenness. Comfort and strengthen the widows and the orphans. We pray. Lord, have mercy. We know and pray, Lord, you will intercede for us, our merciful and loving Father, when we fail. Lift us up when we are despondent. Give us peace, the peace that comes from you and you alone, and guide us in the way of truth. Glory to God forever and ever. Amen. With these prayers, those said aloud in your home, whispered to God, or still weighing on your heart, let us bring them all together and in the language closest to our hearts. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Go into creation in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Verflucht war zum Baum des Lebens und bringt gute Frucht. Kyrie Eleison, sieh wohin wir gehen, ruf uns aus den Toten, lass uns auferstehen. Doch der 